This video has been designed to guide you through all you need to know about vestibular migraine. My name is Claire Snape and I'm a specialist audiologist at the University Hospitals of Derby and Burton. I'm joined by my colleague Chrissy Hill, who's a vestibular physiotherapist for the same trust. In this video, we hope to help you understand more about vestibular migraine, a common condition which is related to classic migraine, but which has dizziness as one of the main symptoms. No two people with migraine experience exactly the same thing, but there are common features which can include headache, sensitivity to light and sound, and visual aura or flashing lights. In vestibular migraine, vertigo is also one of these features. Whichever form your migraine takes, you are not on your own. Vestibular migraine is increasingly understood to be common and in most cases manageable with some simple lifestyle changes. We hope that this information video will help you feel more able to understand, less fearful of, and more in control of your vestibular migraine symptoms. In this video, we're going to cover what a migraine is, what causes a migraine, the triggers for migraine, and the treatments, including medication. Vestibular migraine is one of more than 10 types of migraine. It's a migraine in which people experience vertigo, dizziness, or balance problems. This type of migraine mostly occurs without the typical headache and can vary in duration, but most will often last from minutes to hours. A vestibular migraine is typically associated with intolerance of movement, nausea, vomiting, sweating, flushing, diarrhea and or visual changes. Many patients also report difficulty concentrating, finding loud sounds and bright lights uncomfortable and extreme fatigue. The underlying cause for migraine is unknown and vestibular migraine is no different, but it seems to result from confused pathways in the brain that control information about pain and balance. Vestibular migraine can cause balance symptoms with or without an actual headache. However, there's almost always a history of migraine, headaches or motion sickness in the person's lifetime, even if it was years ago in childhood. Migraine runs in families and there is a genetic link in two out of three cases. It's also closely linked with anxiety and depression. Vestibular migraine is also strongly related to environmental factors and next we will discuss triggers in more detail. One of the main triggers for migraine is stress and anxiety. Studies have shown that 80% of migraine sufferers report that stress is a trigger. Some people experience migraine episodes when they are stressed. When we feel anxious or stressed, our bodies release hormones which help us deal with that stress. Unfortunately, these hormones can cause migraine symptoms. Some people have their migraine symptoms when they are relaxed after a period of stress, busyness or worry. Some call this the letdown effect. It has been suggested that this may be related to the stress hormones in our blood reducing. Others suggest that migraine episode is the brain's way of enforcing rest after a time of busyness, worry or stress. Whatever pattern your migraine takes, it can be helpful to avoid high levels of stress and anxiety and fluctuations in stress and anxiety levels. Keeping a symptom and lifestyle diary for one month can help you to identify when your migraine symptoms are worst and what your triggers might be. Note down how badly you are experiencing your symptoms. I use a score out of 10, with 10 out of 10 being the worst the symptoms can be, and zero out of 10 being no symptoms at all. You can also note down if there are times when you are particularly stressed, anxious or busy. We will talk later about using this diary to also identify dietary triggers. Try to work out if there is a relationship between your lifestyle and your symptoms. If you find that stress is one of your symptoms, taking action to avoid excessive stress can be helpful. Here are a list of suggestions which others have found useful. Number one, plan your activities for the week so that, as much as you can, you spread the load of emotional and physical stress evenly across the week. Number two, 
Ensure that you build downtime into your schedule. This may be as simple as ensuring that you take your allotted lunch break. Depending on your interests and leisure activities, this may involve meeting with friends, time to read your favourite book, listening to music or craft activities. Number three, find time every day for some fresh air and natural light. Migraine is frequently triggered by certain kinds of lighting. Using breaks from work or routine to be outside, weather permitting, gives the brain a break from screens and artificial lighting. Deep breathing exercises or gentle exercise out of doors aids relaxation and well-being. Number four, take time each week to exercise. This may be with friends, as part of a club or on your own. Exercise causes the release of hormones which encourage happiness and relaxation and reduce pain. A fitter body moves more easily and in a more balanced way. Exercises help with weight control, digestion, breathing and muscle and joint stiffness. Find a way of exercising that you enjoy and you can sustain. Avoid doing too much too soon and losing interest because it's too hard. Start gently and build up your activity level slowly as you get fitter and stronger. Number five, try meditation or relaxation techniques such as breathing exercises or mindfulness. There are apps which you can download onto your phone which will guide your efforts. Yoga and Tai Chi use postural exercises and breathing patterns to promote balance and well-being. There are classes for different ability levels available online and in most local communities. Number six, read up about vestibular migraine and how it works. The more you understand, the more you will realize that you are not alone, the less fearful you will be and the more able you will feel to take control. Migraine trigger number two, poor sleep. People with migraine can reduce their symptoms by getting a more consistent night's sleep. It may seem strange that getting too much sleep can cause migraine symptoms, as well as not getting enough sleep. Things to consider are, how do you use your bedroom? The bedroom is for sleeping only and best kept dark, quiet and cool. Avoid using any devices that give off blue light, such as smartphones or tablets, in the bedroom. They make it harder to get off to sleep. What does your lifestyle and bedtime routine look like? A tired body will sleep better than a body that has been inactive. Gentle movement and exercise could include walking, swimming, tai chi, gardening and even housework. Moving more often is the key. Try to set regular times each day for activity and breaks. Set a consistent bedtime and getting up time, most important. Have a consistent bedtime routine. Stick with this plan for several weeks to allow your body to adapt, even if it doesn't feel like it's making a big difference initially. What chemicals are you taking in that can affect your sleep? Reduce or cut out caffeine. If having caffeine, avoid it after lunchtime. Avoid drinking late in the evening if you have to get up to use the toilet. Avoid large meals late in the evening before sleep time as this leads to more restless sleep. Alcohol and cigarettes can reduce sleep quality. Consider using mindfulness and breathing exercises to relax your muscles and brain before dropping off to sleep. Some people find a good book or even a boring textbook helps them feel sleepy. To find out more about what we call sleep hygiene, you can use Dr. Google. Many websites have slightly different information, so it's worth researching a few different sites to find one that you can relate to. Other external triggers. There are many external triggers for vestibular migraine and these can vary from person to person, but some common ones include alcohol and caffeine, with both of these, it's likely due to the dehydration they cause and or the effect the chemicals have on the blood vessels in the brain. Another common trigger is stress and anxiety, likely caused by the changes in levels of certain chemicals in the brain, such as serotonin, which helps to regulate pain. Certain foods can be a trigger, for example, cheese, which contains the chemical tyramine and processed foods, which contain nitrates. 
Artificial sweeteners and food dyes are also known to trigger some people. If you keep a symptom diary as mentioned before, you can also keep a record of your diet and drinks. Carefully writing down everything you eat and drink might help you recognise patterns which may identify triggers for your migraine symptoms. Skipping meals and letting blood sugar levels drop can cause dizziness, as can things like strong smells, artificial lighting and changes in the weather or air pressure. You will often see dizziness as a side effect on medication, but over medication can also be a trigger. As we've already mentioned, hunger and dehydration are a big cause for many, as are a lot of common foods, but another trigger is hormones, whether this is teenage hormones, menstrual changes or menopause. Many people aren't comfortable with taking the strong medications used to treat migraine, but are happy to take dietary supplements. It is important to be confident that what you are taking is well researched and known to be helpful. There are many studies which have found both magnesium and riboflavin, vitamin B2, helpful. They have to be taken in higher doses, higher than the usual daily multivitamin amount. Coenzyme Q10 is also proven to be effective in reducing migraine symptoms. Riboflavin, B2, is taken in doses of up to 400 mg daily. This is much more than the over-the-counter multivitamin tablet, so speak to your GP before starting this. Magnesium should be taken as magnesium oxide in doses of 400 to 500 mg daily. Magnesium can lower your blood pressure and have other side effects, so it is worth having a conversation with your GP about this before taking it. Coenzyme Q10 has been shown to reduce the frequency and severity of migraine attacks, but there isn't a recommended dose yet. If you are interested in taking this, ask your GP. All of these need to be taken for at least three months to see if they help. You can't expect overnight benefits and changes to your situation. I recommend trying one supplement and changing or adding a second after three months if there hasn't been any or very much benefit. That way you will know which one has been helpful. With all these supplements, results vary from person to person. Have a look at the internet and look at what the different migraine organisations have to say. Don't just follow what I have to say. There is lots of information out there, so read all about it and then ask your doctor or pharmacist if you have any queries or concerns. Because migraine and vestibular migraine is so common and debilitating, lots of organisations have been set up to research migraine and support those who suffer from migraine. There is heaps of advice regarding all the different symptoms, triggers and treatments for migraine. And again, these can be very person specific. Some of the websites might even seem to contradict other sources of information. This is because what for some people may be a trigger, for others may be a treatment. Caffeine is a good example of this. Many will find that caffeine gives them migraines if taken regularly. If a person rarely has caffeine, they may find that it relieves their symptoms. So have a look at some of the websites listed and look at more than one so that you are reading a wide range of information. The more educated you are about migraine, the better you will understand how you can manage your condition better. Medication and treatment. 80% of people can be helped by lifestyle modifications. Use a diary to identify your triggers and eliminate or take steps to control as many of them as you can. A healthy lifestyle with good diet, exercise and stress management can be the key to stopping or significantly reducing vestibular migraine. If you rarely have caffeine, a strong coffee can help when an attack starts. If lifestyle changes alone don't control your symptoms, you may want to combine these with over-the-counter medication like aspirin, paracetamol or ibuprofen to be taken when the attack starts. Avoid medication overuse, however, as this can also cause headaches. Your GP or ENT consultant may prescribe medication if needed. These can take two forms, something to take to prevent a migraine starting or something to take when an attack is underway. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. We hope it's been helpful. 
Please keep an eye on the PKB platform for any other videos or information that might be of interest to you.